In today's interview, we will talk about loss of experience. In our current society, mergers and acquisitions are business as usual. To support these decisions, financial models point out the benefits of the synergy of two companies, two teams, less overhead, etc. Part of the benefits is cost savings by reducing the numbers of employees. A routine job. But the person that leaves the company did not do routine work. She or he was an expert with invaluable knowledge and experience. Therefore, a loss of experience. Particularly since many of those who leave are taking a well-deserved early retirement. In our studio today, two great panthers. Jeff Haver, who recently retired from the Dow Chemical Company, and Alan Olsen, who just retired from Ferro. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Every interview this week, we will start with the same question. What did you do in 1996? So, Alan, what did you do? In 1996, I was working for the BF Goodrich Chemical Company in Cleveland. Uh, I had rolled off of doing advocacy on vinyl polymers, rolled onto the SAP team, actually redesigned uh, a lot of the business processes around billing and pricing and, and so forth, and then rolled off of the team, maybe in the same era, uh, as one of the business managers and, and back on to advocacy. Okay, and Jeff? I was happily working in analytical research, but I happened to uh, start working on some FDA projects, which rolled over into regulatory. I found regulatory fascinating, and so when an opportunity arose, I took it. Some of the decision makers might think it's true to reduce the number of in-house experts. They even have a name for that, the outsourcing model. Do you think that actually works, that model? It can work, but like managing any sort of project, whether we're managing regulatory, advocacy, building a plant with engineering, you still need in-house experts who are managing the experts. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's a matter of efficiency. You will get the job done, but without that in-house expertise, the history, the knowledge of the technology, it will be a much longer project each and every time. And that institutional history is really what's essential to be able to make these projects in the regulatory environment we're in work. And the other thing is there's always time to spin up. What do you mean with spin up? The outside experts, you have to teach the outside experts what your chemistry is. Okay, yeah. Especially chemistry. And then what your um, applications are and who the customers are. The other thing to remember is that for in the regulatory world, sometimes there's really short deadlines. So you can't go shopping for experts in, uh, to, to make that decision and then to make the filing. Uh, but did Faro invest in successorship? Faro retained me for a while to answer questions, and I retain a, a good relationship in, in case uh, you need a lot of extra work done, I'm, I'm available for that. Uh, and I kind of trained the next guy. But again, it started with, you need to understand our chemistry. You need to understand where we operate, and oh, by the way, we sell into 100 countries. Very good. Jeff, are you aware of investment in successorship in industry, as well as knowledge retention? The problem is when you have these acquisitions and mergers and then on top of that have an economic downturn, downsizing and outsourcing seems to be the only solution and that has been what has been going on. Uh, I think we're at a tipping point where it's getting to be a crisis situation uh, because you can do that for only so long. Well, one of the things with um, acquisitions in, in particular, whether you're adding a big company or a little company, you're always adding complexity people lose sight that you're, you're adding complexity. And so when you're looking at downsizing uh, while you're adding complexity, the two are in opposition to each other. You have to be very, very careful. One of my observations, but correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, there's a generation gap. There are many very knowledgeable uh, persons that are at the end of their career or just finished it, uh, but there are very few of Generation X in their 40s and 50s. And of Generation Y, the Millennials, there are even less. Is it a good observation? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what's been happening. And I think, when I think back to when I started, my supervisor at that time had already been doing regulatory for a couple of decades. So he saw Tosca, he saw Europe, he saw Korea, he saw Australia, he saw the, one by one and had the time to digest each new regime as it came in. 
compare, contrast, see the complexity, see the differences. Now, when you have a young folks coming in, we have so many countries, so many inventories, so many different systems, it's overwhelming to try and at one begin, start now, today, you're going to understand all this. Um, and that gets back to the succession planning where you have to nurture these folks and give them the opportunity to learn so that they can uh, effectively do the job. How could industry attract more millennials? The, the chemicals industry on, on the whole has to look at, well, who am I com competing against? And it's not just trying to uh, poach millennials uh, from another chemical company. It's, it's poaching from the top companies, the top, top companies, and that's where you're going to get really good performers. Uh, along the line of what Jeff was saying, you can't just bring a millennial in, uh, put him or her in a cubicle, and say, you know, read the manual here, you know, read the encyclopedia of inventories. There's mentoring. And so the real loss that, that you know, com we come back to is when the baby boomers, like us, are leaving, you, you don't have the institutional knowledge within the company or uh, within the agencies. It's happening at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So as you're bringing in the young people, you're, you're sort of by default putting them in the cubicle by themselves. So if chemical industry would be able to increase the X factor and attract more people, how would you be able to educate them or what would you be your advice? They already recognize there's a problem. So that's, that's there. Now the solution is you have to spend some money. You have to crack some eggs to make an omelet. It's not going to just happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and what it is is investing time in these folks, giving them the opportunity to learn and grow and see things. And that way they will stay and you will get the, the institutional knowledge you're looking for. The good news for industry that needs knowledge and experience, both Jeff and Alan uh, are independent consultants now and yes, they have a phone number. <laughs>